After accidentally taking a person's life, a group of young people begin to be chased by a clown with a bizarre mask who won't rest until he's finished them all off. Today we're going to recap the story of the movie, Killer Book Club, from 2022. At college, Angela and her friends usually meet at the book club, where they spend the week reading a book and then meet to discuss the story. After reading the latest clown horror, they get together to talk about chlorophobia and the story of John Wayne Gacy, a man who dressed up as a clown to commit crimes. While the others talk about the things Gacy has done, Nando and Sebastian end up having a disagreement and Angela tries to calm her boyfriend down. Thinking that she has sided with Sebas, the young man decides to leave and leaves his girlfriend behind with his friend. On the way to her house, Sebastian talks about the book Angela has written and offers to help her write a new edition, but the girl realizes his intention and refuses, saying that Nando will go home as soon as he gets off work. After saying goodbye, Angela begins to write a few chapters of a new story and decides to send a preview to her literature professor, but she gives up and decides to delete it. While thinking about what to do, the girl remembers the conversation they had at the club and decides to take an online test to see if she has chlorophobia, but ends up being more scared than expected and shuts down her laptop before finishing. The next morning, Angie goes to horror literature class with Professor Cruzado, where the students discuss cliches in films and series. After class, Angela is leaving when the professor calls her to say he's received the email and asks to talk in private. Even though she's confused, the girl accepts the invitation and goes to Cruzado's office, where he tells her that he liked what he read and Angela tells him a little more about her story, which leaves the professor equally confused and makes him ask what she's talking about. Cruzado then talks about the email and says that he would love to spend more time with her, which leaves Angela even more confused. Suddenly, the professor approaches the girl, who rushes to the door, but since it's locked, there's nothing she can do but stand there paralyzed with fear. Thinking that this is what she wants, Cruzado gets even closer and throws the student against the wall, but Angie refuses to allow this to continue and delivers a knee right between professor's legs. In a rage, Cruzado unlocks the door and threatens Angela saying that if she tells anyone, her career as a writer will be over, but even without her saying anything, her friends realize that something is wrong and decide to take revenge, setting up a prank with a clown to catch the professor. Now that the plan is hatched, the girl sends an email asking for another chance and arranges a meeting with Cruzado, all while her friends are buying costumes and making preparations. With everything ready, the group goes to the college at the appointed time and they begin to recap the plan when Virginia comes out of the library. Now that she has seen them, Ray has come to the conclusion that the only way to ensure that the girl doesn't say anything is if she also takes part, so now Virginia is also part of the plan. With the team complete, Ray breaks into the professor's office, who at first thinks it's a student angry about his grades, but runs away terrified when the young man uses a hammer to break his things. Desperate, Cruzado runs through the corridors while more and more clowns appear in the middle of his path, trapping him and directing him to where Angela is. When she hears the professor approaching, the girl puts on her mask and waits for him, but in the middle of the path, another clown hits the Cruzado in the face with a hammer and he becomes totally disoriented, which causes him to bump into Angie and fall from the balcony, being pierced by a statue of Don Quixote on the floor below. Without understanding what happened, the other members of the club accuse Angela, who tries to defend herself, saying that she slipped, but now it doesn't matter anymore and everyone will be accused of the professor's elimination. Wanting to avoid this, Ray remembers that the Cruzado recently got divorced and suggests running away and leaving the body there. That way, people will think he took his own life and no one will find out what happened. Feeling that this is wrong, Angela insists that they should tell the truth and turn themselves into the police, but no one is on her side, not even Nando. Outnumbered, the girl sees no other option but to accept and burn their masks, signing a pact never to speak of what happened again. The next day, the students at the college start commenting on the professor and Angela feels even guiltier, which makes her isolate herself from her friends and boyfriend. Still, Angie can't just stop going to college and goes to literature class, where a professor is replacing Cruzado. Realizing how upset her friend is, Sebas approaches her and tries to console her, but the girl is still feeling unwell and asks to be left alone. Having nothing to do, the young man goes to his seat and starts attending class until he receives a notification about a new administrator in the book club, the clown. Suddenly, the new admin sends a PDF called Chapter 1, in which he details the youngster's entire plan and tells them how Cruzado perished, which freaks out all the other members of the club. Not knowing what to do, they gather at the meeting point and Angela reads the story in front of everyone, discovering that the clown knows even more than they thought and that he is going to eliminate all of them, one in each chapter. Wondering who the clown could be, Ray remembers that there was no one else in the building, so the writer could only be one of them. With this information, they start fighting with each other and Ray accuses Virginia, 
slapping the girl's hands and revealing extremely bizarre drawings she has made on some sheets of paper. Angrily, Virginia takes the papers back and leaves the building, ending the meeting without them paying the book any attention. The next morning, Angela is getting ready in the changing room when she notices a red light behind her. When she turns around, the girl sees someone dressed as a clown and screams in fear, but when the other people come closer, the creature disappears right before her eyes, which makes her think it's a hallucination. Frightened, Angie finishes getting dressed and leaves the changing room, where she is surprised by Sebas who tells her that the second chapter has already been published, this time called, The Elimination of the Child. In this story, Virginia is afraid of being caught by the clown and decides to run away to her mother's house, but when she is waiting for the bus, the lights start to fail and the girl is surprised by the clown, forcing her to run away and leave her suitcase behind. Frightened, Virginia goes to an abandoned building while Pennywise, runs after her. At full speed, the clown manages to catch up with her and pushes her to the ground, causing her to fall on a nail that rips through her belly. Now that Virginia is totally defenseless, the stalker climbs on top of her and shoves his hammer into the girl's mouth, piercing her skull and eliminating her almost instantly. As the story progresses, Angela and Sebas arrive at the abandoned building and can't find any trace of blood, which makes them suspect that it's a lie, but when they look up at the ceiling, they find, continue, written in blood at the top of the wall. Just then, Eva comes up to them and reveals that there's nothing there, but that she knows a way to find out who the clown is. Wanting to prove her point, she gathers everyone in the library and claims that the writer is someone who knows the book they read at the last meeting, so all they have to do is check the records to find out who picked up the copies last week. Checking the documents, Eva realizes that the people who have picked up the most horror books are the club members themselves and that no one has read a clown story for months, meaning that the person behind the mask is certainly one of them. While Eva is explaining her theory, Angela receives an audio from Nando and moves away from the group to listen, but as soon as she enters the next session, she receives a message from the clown saying that horror books don't stay there. Frightened, the girl starts to look around and asks if he's watching her, which the clown confirms. Not believing it to be true, she begins to walk down the corridor until she hears footsteps coming from behind her and turns to look, realizing that the stalker is at the end of the corridor. Terrified, the girl runs through the session and hides behind a bookcase, but the criminal still manages to find her and Angela has to run away again, only stopping when she bumps into Nando. Relieved to see her boyfriend again, the girl starts hugging him until she notices the mask falling out of his pocket, which makes everyone suspect that he is the clown. When the others try to expel him, Nando defends himself against the accusations by saying that he found the object in the library, but no one believes his story and Ray expels him. After the scare, Angela takes Sebas to her home and together they begin to analyze the clown writer's profile, discovering that he is sharing the story with Angela's old profile, where she published the book of the girl with the carrion, the tale about a teenager who went crazy and threw gasoline on her own mother, setting both the woman and her house on fire. Curious, Sebas asks if this means anything and Angela says no, asking to be left alone for a while to think about things. While all this is going on, the rest of the club goes to the bar where Nando works and Ray gets into another disagreement with him, leaving the establishment shortly afterwards. While Ray uses illegal substances outside, Angela receives chapter 3 describing the elimination of the bully, who is so busy with his addiction that he doesn't notice the clown approaching. Taking advantage of the distraction, the stalker gets closer and closer until he is noticed by Ray, who manages to strike him and remove his mask. Seeing the true face of the mysterious clown, the young man is astonished and ends up letting his guard down, giving the clown the opportunity to cut a hole in his stomach with the sharp end of the hammer. Already destroyed, Ray begins to drown in his own blood and perishes without having time to tell the others his secret. Now that he has made his second victim, the maniacal clown describes how he dragged the body to the abandoned swimming pool where they burned the masks, but when they arrive at the place, they find no sign of Ray or the criminal, just a message, just like in Virginia's case. At the same time, Coldo starts a live stream spreading the story of the clown and everyone at the college starts following his profile, which makes the survivors of the club suspect that he is the one behind the mask. Angry, Nando goes to Coldo to ask why he did it and Sarah manages to calm him down before things get any worse. With a cool head, Nando asks where Angela is and Sarah replies that she's hiding, but that she doesn't trust him and won't tell him where. Together with Sebastian, Angie starts looking at the books on the shelf when she realizes that the clown is right behind her. Even though she thinks it's another hallucination, the girl starts to get terrified until Sebas returns with a glass of wine, which makes the clown mysteriously disappear. After handing Angela the cup, Sebastian calls her over to his computer and shows her that he has found the clown's accounts on other social networks, and in all of them, the mysterious man follows the profile of an Alicia who claims to be a writer, 
but who hasn't published anything for six years. Curious, Sebas asks if Angela knows her and the girl replies that Alicia is the protagonist of her book. Angela then reveals that she met the girl six years ago and that they became virtual best friends. Thanks to this closeness, Alicia told her how her mother was obsessed with literature and how she forced her daughter to spend hours just reading or writing, punishing her every time she tried to take a break. Upon hearing about her friend's life, Angela thought it would make a good horror story and published Alicia's story as her own, but the book became quite famous and the girl found out before Angie could tell her what she had done. She then finishes by saying that Alicia has promised to take revenge and Sebastian asks if she could be the clown, but Angela replies that this is impossible, as the girl was burned along with her mother. Realizing that everything is happening because of her, Angie begins to have a crisis and Sebas calms her down with a kiss, without suspecting that on the other side of town, the clown sends their location to Nando saying that this is his last chance to save her. Determined to rescue her, the young man drops everything at work and rushes to the place the clown has marked, but it's all just a trap. Just over 10 meters from his destination, Nando continues to follow the location on his cell phone until he arrives in a room full of bodies, including that of Professor Cruzado. After the scare, the young man tries to close the bag when he notices the clown watching him from the corner of the room. Desperate, Nando runs from the masked writer and manages to hide behind one of the stretchers, pushing the object towards the criminal and finally knocking him down. Thinking that the guy is unconscious, Nando approaches him and tries to remove the mask, but the clown regains consciousness just in time and manages to hit him on the head with a hammer. Without suspecting what happened to her boyfriend, Angela finishes what she was doing with Sebastian when she receives the fourth chapter telling the story of how Nando perished. Desperate, the girl goes to the hospital where she finds her boyfriend with only a cut on his forehead, which leaves her very confused. He then explains that the clown hit him and left thinking he had finished the job, but luckily for him, he just fainted and was found a few minutes later. Greatly relieved, Angela hugs her boyfriend and finally decides to talk about Alicia, but before she can finish explaining, the police show up wanting to know what happened to Nando and he asks his girlfriend to leave, saying he'll make something up and they'll talk later. While walking back to Sebas, Angela receives a notification from Coldo's live stream in which the man once again talks about the clown, but as if that wasn't bad enough, this time he organizes a horror book fair and asks everyone to go dressed as a clown. For some reason, the survivors decide to go to the place where they wait until they receive a link to a live broadcast from the clown. Following the direction of the images, they start going up to people in costume thinking they are the criminal, but they miss the target every time, annoying people who are just taking pictures or watching videos. Because of all the commotion, they are targeted by the security guards who capture Sebastian. Next to him, Sarah manages to escape and runs to hide in the greenhouse. Afraid of being caught, she continues to walk around the place until she sees the clown on the lower floor right under her feet. To finish Sarah off, the clown climbs the stairs trying to capture her and the girl manages to knock him down with a kick to the chest, opening the way for her to escape. As everything is being broadcast live, Angela realizes that her friend is in danger and starts running towards the greenhouse to save her. Even after the volley, the bizarre maniac clown continues to chase Sarah who manages to reach the door where Angie is waiting for her. But as the passage is locked, the girl can't escape and ends up receiving a hammer in the back, which makes her stagger backwards until she falls into a fountain. Seeing her friend being run through by the tool, Angela goes into shock and starts running until she finds the crowd again. Suddenly, someone in a completely bloody costume appears and falls to the ground right in front of Sebastian, who kneels down to remove the mask and discovers that it's Coldo, whose throat has been completely slit. Unable to speak, the young man begins to suffocate until he loses his life after just a few seconds. Looking around, Nando sees that Eva has the hammer in her hands and the librarian claims to be innocent, but before he can do anything, Angela's pressure drops and she ends up losing consciousness in front of everyone. Some time later, Angie wakes up in the ambulance and Nando says that they should report Eva as soon as possible, but Angela knows that if they do this she will eliminate Sebastian and decides to act on her own. To put an end to this once and for all, the girl takes the hammer that Eva threw away and goes to the room where the club used to meet, but when she gets there, she finds Eva's body in shock from blood loss. Confused, Angela tries to calm the librarian who loses her life before her eyes. Not knowing what to do, the girl continues to explore the place until she finds Sebastian tied to a chair. As she doesn't know if he's alive, Angela approaches the young man who wakes up and begs to be released, but while she's trying to do so, Nando arrives and Sebas starts accusing him of being the clown. With the hammer in hand, Angela attacks her boyfriend, who screams as he tries to prove his innocence, and manages to get her to stop the attack. Out of patience, Sebastian lets go of the rope and takes the hammer from Angela's hands to shove it into her boyfriend's stomach, 
finally revealing that he was the clown all along. Feeling victorious, Sebastian corners the girl against the wall and explains everything that happened, revealing that it was he who sent the email to the Cruzado and struck him in the face during his revenge, causing the professor to lose his balance and fall on Don Quixote's spear. Finally, Sebas explains that he also wanted to be a writer and that's why he frequented the same website as her, which is where he met Alicia and began their virtual relationship. After finding out what Angela had done, the girl went to vent to her web boyfriend and together they planned the whole thing, but Angie refused to play the victim and pulled a pen out of her pocket, using it to go through Sebastian's jaw and tongue. With the real criminal incapacitated, the girl checks on Nando and starts running through the corridors to ask for help, but when she arrives at the exact spot where Cruzado fell, she finds another clown who takes off his mask in front of her, revealing herself to be Virginia, the girl who was attacked in the second chapter. Not understanding how she is alive, Angela asks what is going on and the girl replies that Virginia was just a character they created, revealing that her real name is Alicia. Incredulous, Angela says that her best friend had perished in the fire and the girl denies it, revealing that she was hidden away writing the story that will end Angela's life. Alicia then begins to recap everything that has happened from a point of view in which Angie is blamed for the eliminations of everyone in the club, but while she is distracted talking, Nando arrives from behind and hits Sebastian on the head, causing him to fall off the balcony and hit his mouth on Don Quixote's spear, just like Cruzado. Furious at losing her boyfriend, Alicia hits Nando over the head with a hammer and starts running after Angela, but manages to lose sight of her after a few seconds on the run. After passing through a few corridors, Angie arrives in the engine room where she notices some shorted wires and a leaking fuel pipe. Thinking to use this to her advantage, she opens the hose valve and hides in a safe place while Alicia gets closer and closer. Without realizing what Angela has done, the girl continues looking for the victim until she gets close enough for Angie to put her plan into action. As soon as the woman steps on the fuel, Angela drops a steel plate that touches the wire and shorts out, releasing sparks that ignite and set Alicia's body on fire while Angie just watches, just as the hoodie teenager did to her own mother six years ago. With that, the whole mystery behind the criminal clown is solved and both Nando and Angela manage to survive, allowing them to move on with their lives. A year later, Angie is studying with her boyfriend while taking advantage of her free time to write about what happened. During the break, Angela says goodbye to Nando and walks to the cafeteria to continue her book, but halfway there, she meets someone dressed as a clown and starts to think it's another hallucination. While Angela plans a way back to reality, the mysterious clown takes off his mask and reveals herself to be Alicia, who comes down hard on her former best friend who can do nothing but scream. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.